What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. I'm going to continue to examine 100 years of the greatest 150 black fighters of all times. Now, I'd like to take a look at Lynn Mathis, who was a featherweight who fought out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was born May 12, 1939, and stood 5 foot 8 inches. He was fast with his feet, had a very good jab, and understood his weapons, left hook and right uppercut combinations. Now, Lynn would begin his professional debut November 7, 1957. He would have four fights that year and all knockouts. Stop men such as Charles Carter, Lee Mann, Bernie Bibbs, and Bill Goodman. The longest he would go with three rounds. But in 1958, he would have civil fights, beginning in January 15th. And he would take on Milton Ferguson. And he would stop him in three rounds in Philadelphia. February 12th, 1958, he would take on Norman Young. And he would stop him in four rounds. He would continue knocking men out until he would approach Pappy Goat. Pappy Goat would be a contender in those years. That fight took place May 13th, 1958. And he would go eight rounds with Pappy Go, but he would win a decision. He would further knock out fighters such as Henry Brown and Bobby Rogers, Steve Ward. But he would go to distance once again with Tommy Tibbs, Orlando Zulueta. Now, Orlando Zulueta was a very good Cuban fighter. I believe he was in the top ten several times. But he was a good fighter. But he would go to distance with Orlando Zulueta. He would have a draw with Ray Lancaster, December 22nd, 1958 in Philadelphia. And it would be an eight round draw. 1959, January 15th to be exact. He'd be in the ring with Paul Armstead, Hollywood, California. And he would lose for the first time in his career, 10 rounds. But he would get back in the ring February 16th of 59. And he would take on Ray Lancaster once again, Philadelphia. And he would knock him out in two rounds. But he would get a rude awakening April 13th of 59. Be in the ring with Carlos Ortiz. Carlos Ortiz would be the first Puerto Rican lightweight champion of all times. He would accomplish that by defeating Old Bones Joe Brown. But Lynn Masters would suffer a beating in Philadelphia, his hometown. He'd be stopped in six rounds. And he would be faced with 72 unanswered punches. For that fight was stopped. Lynn Masters was a very good boxer. But when it was time to step up in competition with fighters such as Carlos Ortiz, he just had problems with traps that were set for him. So for that reason, I can't place him in 100 years of the greatest 150 black fighters of all time, but I can definitely mention him. He's one of those fighters who does not get the attention that he should so rightly deserve. And it was my responsibility to do that. I mean, after all, he was in a ring with fighters such as Willie Tao and Paul Armstead and Chico Morales and Kenny McFarlane, Johnny Buzo. Johnny Buzo was in a ring with Jimmy Carter and Oboe's Drew Brown. He would stop Buzo in one round. It was a very good victory for him. Doug Villain fought him in Miami Beach and defeated him in 10 rounds. Fought him April 22nd, 1960. Be in a ring with Arthur Pursley, May 12th, 1960. Fought him in Philadelphia and he would stop him in four rounds. Kenny Lane, October 8th, 1960. And he would knock him out and three rounds. Now, Kenny Lane fought Carlos Ortiz for the junior welterweight championship strap. Kenny Lane used to train along with Carlos Ortiz and Jake LaMotta and many others in Gleason's Gym in the Bronx, New York, located on 149th Street and 3rd Avenue. He was very underrated, but that was a very good victory. Philin Mathis. 
He would lose to Doug Villan, Philadelphia, fought him twice. Lost to him December 6, 1960. Ten rounds. But then again, in 1961, he would lose again to Carlos Hernandez. March 27th of 1961. Lose to him in ten rounds. But he would take out J.D. Ellis. Philadelphia, uh, I'm sorry, February 6th of 1961. Took him out in 10 rounds. He was in the ring with Eddie Armstrong and Dave Charlie. These are all good fighters. Jimmy Sue and Alfredo Urbina. So I want to shout out Lynn Mathis. On another list, he would definitely be placed. But I can't place him on 150 greatest black fighters. That ranges within a hundred year span. So shout out to Lynn Mathis. He was worth enough for me to bring light to his career. Lynn Mathis, very good featherweight and pretty good lightweight. Among company of Lynn Mathis in the Philadelphia gyms, you would have fighters such as Billy Sweepy Peacock. You would have Lynn Brown. You would have Toothpick Brown. Very good fighters in that lighter division in Philadelphia. Shout out to Lynn Mathis.